Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode it's going to be Luminar 4. Now we're uh, using Luminar 4 as a standalone product today. I thought that would be a great tutorial today, especially for all of those of you who are using Luminar as your exclusive photo editing software. So I'm going to show you how I do things with Luminar 4. So without any further ado, let's get started. One thing I really like about Luminar 4 is um, when you're working with it as a standalone product, you don't have to uh, put all your images into uh, Luminar if you don't want to. So what you can do is just come over here to this little plus right here. Make sure you're in the library module. And you could uh, add a folder with images or edit a single image, which is nice. But just come up here to add folder with images and it'll open up this interface here. And let's see. I want to add some images in here. I think right here in this folder. So I'll click add folder and it'll update this image gallery and we'll see those images start to come in. Now, if we look over here, we're on library, of course, and you can see the folders that I've brought into Luminar 4. And this is one we just brought in here. There was 237 images, and here they are here. Now, all we have to do is pick one that we want to work on. Here's something we can do in Luminar. Uh, we can create albums. And this is nice. Uh, for instance, I might want to make an album called Possible Edit. So, like, maybe this image right here, I like it. So it's selected, so let me come up here and click on the plus key here. Then I can come here and double click Untitled Album 1. Let's call this Possible Edits. Okay, so we just might want to, you know, work our way through these images and decide which images we want to work on. So I'm going to do it this way. There's all kind of ways that you can select images and call through your images. But uh, this is one way I like to work, and I'll just show you this little technique here. So there we go, and we have possible edits, and we have this one image in there. Now we can come back to this collection here, and say we're looking through here, and we say, well, you know, this image looks interesting, so I can drag it up and drag it right onto that album, and maybe like, yeah, say like this guy right here, pop him in the album, and uh, maybe this guy right here throw him in there and maybe let's get one more and I'm thinking maybe this guy right here so we throw him there so now when I click on possible edits there's my images here now I can double click and there's the first image and I'm just gonna uh, go through these by clicking my right arrow key there's my second image it's my third and here's my fourth. Okay, now here's a cool thing. If you uh, type your G key on your keyboard, you can go back to the thumbnail view here. And let's see here. And we have some choices on thumbnails. We can make them medium size or we can make them large size. Or let's see, if we hit click this plus key, we can go that way too. So we can hit the minus key. So we can change our thumbnail sizes. So that's really cool. Now we just have to decide what image do we want to work on. Maybe this guy right here. So I'm going to double click him. Now all we need to do is go into edit to edit it. But also we can click on info right here. And it'll tell us a little bit about the image. Uh, it was shot on a Canon EOS 40D uh, with this particular lens here. And here's the ISO was 1000, f4.5, 1 200th of a second. Uh, no exposure compensation and 60 millimeter lens so it was a macro lens so that's nice we have that information so now let's click on edit and now we're ready to start editing our image on an edit the first place I like to start is come up here to the uh, canvas tools right here and come to lens and geometry and I always like to check off auto distortion corrections and it'll automatically do that for you remove chromatic aberrations I don't see any in here but it's I'm going to check it anyway and defringe. I don't really, I don't see any fringing, so I'm not even going to check that one. And then you can do some manual adjustments like lens distortion adjustments if you need to. I don't really need to on here. And the auto works really well. And you can also do manual adjustments right down here too. All right, so the next step is to go to, I'm going to start with the first tab here, the essentials tab. So we're going to click on the essentials tab. I like to start at the top and work my way down. So I'm going to go ahead and click on late here. Now, 
white balance right here. It's a good place to start. So we have the white balance. Now we have the little eyedropper tool. If we knew something that was of a neutral color, something without color in it, uh, we could go here and, you know, click on this eyedropper tool and come here and click it. And it would help you to set your white balance. Now I shot this with an auto white balance and it did a pretty good job. My Canon 40D does a pretty good job with white balance. And so it works really well. And the next thing I would do is just to see, is there any color cast here I want to get rid of? It looks a little yellow down in here. So I might just want to take my temperature and just move that to the left a little bit to cool it off a little bit. Maybe something right like that looks pretty good. Now the tint I think looks pretty good. I could move the tint to the left to make my greens a little more green. I don't like that. Or move them to the right to add a little more magenta to the image. But I think right where it was, I think it was on a 7, was really good. So I'm going to leave it right there. Now, if you type your uh, J key, you can get, you see these little triangles pop up here. This will show you uh, any, uh, any highlight or shadow clipping that you're getting in your image. And it will show up as colors on your screen. Um, and I, I don't have any right now, but let's uh, go ahead and move the exposure to the right. And see the red start to come here. This is showing me this will be a clipped area right here. So if you see any red when you uh, type your J key and turn your clipping warnings on, you'll see red on the screen if you have any highlights clipped. If you have shadows clipped, it's going to turn blue like this. So if you have any uh, shadows clipped, it'll show up as blue. I don't mind shadow clipping so much, but I don't like highlight clipping. Let me double click exposure and get that back. So that's good. So I wanted to point that out to you. Now, let's just look at our exposure here. Let me just move it up a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. Just to... Now, I also have the highlight clipping still on. So if I, again, if I go too far and I start seeing some clipping, that helps me to know to back it off a little bit. So that's nice to know. This image, I think, looks nice. A little bit of light, the way the light was filtering through here on this flower here, this tulip in the spring. And, of course, we have a smart contrast. This is a really cool adjustment here. I don't know if it's going to help this image much, but it does it kind of intelligently when you adjust it. And you know what? I actually do like a little bit of that. I like what's happening in the reds in here. Don't want to go too crazy here, but maybe just a little bit here. Now I can look at my highlights if I feel I have any highlights that don't look quite right. So I can increase my highlights and bring those highlights up. And again, if I go too far, you can see the clipping starting to come up here. But let me see where I want to go with these highlights. I might just open them up a little bit because I like the lightness of this image. I want it to look uh, kind of fun and light. And now the shadows. And the shadows is a good slider on flower images. A lot of times, uh, I'll take my shadows and move them to the right if I want to get a little more open, airy feel to the image here. Or if you move it to the left, you can deepen up the shadows, depending what kind of a look you're looking for. Uh, let me double-click to get back to the default position right there. So, you know what? I might, I might open those shadows up just maybe like a tiny, tiny little bit. The next thing I want to do before I get too far along here is go ahead and zoom into this image and look for some noise. Okay, so we'll zoom way in here. And we can see, because it was shot at, let's click on info, it was shot at uh, ISO 1000. So, and the Canon 40D is an older Canon camera, so it, it, its noise profile was not the greatest in the world. So, um, let's go back to edit here. And let's go down to denoise and let's do a little noise reduction here. So let's let's just pull up our noise. Now I don't want to go too crazy here. I mean I could pull this the whole way up and get rid of all the noise, but it gets the image looking very unnatural and super smooth. So what I want to do is just I'm not going to take the noise completely out, but I just want to get it looking better than it was. So there it was there. Let me just pull it up to about here. I don't really see any color noise in here, but I'm just for safety pull this up just a little bit here. I think right around there and let's just click on the screen here and get it back to full size and that denoises it and I think that's going to be just fine for now. It's always good to go back and see how far you've come in your edit. So we can either come up here to this eyeball, click this with our mouse, left click it and hold it down. There's the before and here's the after. So I'm liking this. It's happy. It's open. It's light. That's what I'm going for in this image. 
And we can also do the split screen here so we can click this and we can see the before and the left and the after and the right. And we can drag this and go that way too. So there's two different ways of doing it. So I'm really happy with the results so far. Now let's come up to AI Enhance. I always like to try this. Let's see what a little bit of AI Enhance does on this or a lot. Let's just see what it does. Okay. Now here, I don't like what it's doing to my nice dreamy soft background. I don't like that at all. But I do like what it's doing on this part of the flower right in here, maybe right around here and here. So what I might do is pull this up and let's layer mask that in. I think that would be nice. So let's come here to edit mask and we're going to get a brush tool. And you see me do uh, layer masking in the past, if you watch my videos. I'm on paint in, size, is it 100 right now? Softness, I always keep my softness at 100, opacity is 100%. I'm going to leave my opacity at 100%, and I'm just going to start painting that adjustment in. And you notice the picture went back to the normal uh, adjustment as soon as I started to paint. Now, all I want to do is paint on these, mainly on these sharper areas here. And some of the color over in here I think looked nice. It was getting enriched a bit in there. And I also said I maybe wanted to, maybe I'll throw some up into here a little bit. Maybe something like that. Uh, now we can come, do I want to do anything with AI structure? Hey, experiment. Let's just pull up some structure here. And you know what? Again, here, I might just want to add a little bit of structure to some of these sharpened, sharpened areas. So let's uh, go ahead to Edit Mask again. Let's get another brush. And uh, this time, yeah, I'm still going to leave it at 100% because I can readjust here. So as, as soon as I start painting in here, and I am on Paint In. So now let me just paint a little bit of that structure just in some of these sharper areas right in here. Because this was shot with a, with a, what's the depth of field on here? Uh, 4.5, so it's a pretty shallow depth of field with a macro lens, so I'm not going to get tons of sharpness at this close distance, but that's part of the look. It's the dreamy quality, and I like that right there. I think that's looking pretty good. So the AI structure, this is all about uh, local adjustments for me when I'm using some of these things on flowers. Like I just want to pop some details out here and there. So, so far I think we're, you know, we're off to a good start here. And there's probably not a whole lot more we're going to actually even do to this. I think this image is almost complete, but I'm just looking at it. And to me, when I look at it, it has a nice dreamy feel to it. And I'd like to enhance that dreaminess a little bit. So I'm thinking... What about a little bit of little bit of an ethereal type glow to it? So let's go to the creative tab. We have something in here called glow. So let's click on that. And we have three different types: soft, focus, bright, soft focus, and soft glow. I'm thinking soft focus bright. Let me try that and see what happens here. So let me just pull that up a little bit. And look at that. It just adds a nice little extra dreamy glow to the image, which I think really enhances it. Now let's click on this uh, toggle here. So there's the before and there's the after. I like it. I think it looks really good. Now let's come up here to the um, eyeball up here so we can see the before and after. So I'm going to left click it and hold it down. There's the before and there's the after. I like it. I think it's really turned out nicely and just the look I was going for the day I shot this image. Now, if we wanted to export this image, we could come up here to this icon right here and click this, and uh, we could mail it or message it, whatever we want, uh, open it in another program. But say, for instance, we want to, we want to export this, uh, put it on the internet or whatever, click on export to image, and then you could give it a name, uh, tell it where you want it to go. You could do that, and then you could, uh, you want to add some sharpening to it, low, medium, or high, you could do that. And you can resize it. You could send it out as the original size, or you can uh, adjust the size for the long or short edge. And then you can also choose the color space. Like if you're going to put it on the internet, you probably want sRGB, but you can use Adobe RGB or Pro Photo. Um, 
And then you have a format. You can, uh, of course, for the web, you could either go PNG or JPEG. Uh, but if you're going to print it out, you could put it on TIFF or JPEG. Um, you can save it as a Photoshop document, whatever you want. So you can do all that stuff. Now, you can also come back and we're, click on library here. Go to our library. Now, we're, right now we're in, possible edit, in the possible edits album. So if I type the G key, I can see all my images in there. And you'll notice this one right here. See these little this little icon right here? That means this has adjustments on it. Now, the nice thing about Luminar is it automatically saves all these adjustments for you. So you don't have to go and click save. You can come back and open this back up and keep working on that image if you want to. Um, you can remove it from the album if you want to. All you have to do is right click and click on remove from album. It won't get rid of the image. It'll just take it out of the album. Or I could right click it and say go to images from the same date or folder in library. So if I click here, then I go there. And there it is right there. It's the one highlighted right here. So there, there it lives. Okay. And so now that I know it's here, I can come up here to possible edits and remove it from there if I wanted to. Or I may want to work on it further so I can just leave it in there and find it quickly and open it up from there. There's just one last thing I'd like to share with you in this video. Now let's come up here to edit. And this brings us back to our image that we're editing. And there's all our adjustments that we're working on here. But I wanted to point out the history palette right here. So if you click on this right here, history, you'll see every adjustment that you've made to your image. And you can come back to any point and click on that and get to that point. You can come down to the bottom to the original and that'll reset it back to the original here. So that's kind of nice. Think of this as a recipe, like you're making a cake and you added some sugar and you added some oil. And these are all the steps that it took to get there. And that's what Luminar does. It's a non-destructive workflow, so that's really nice. It's just like Lightroom in that respect. So, in other words, every time you add an adjustment, it adds a new direction to the recipe, okay? And these, um, these adjustments do not get baked in until you actually export it out. So that's kind of nice to know. So you can come back here and... and go to any step that you want here so to get out of the history here all we need to do is click on any of these tabs here so I'll click on the essentials tabs and the history closes and I just thought that was important for you to understand uh, how Luminar works and how you can actually go back in time and change things so well that was a full edit using Luminar 4 as a standalone product. Uh, for all of you out there that are just using Luminar 4 as your photo editor, it's a great photo editor and I thought this would be a great video for you. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And also if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new training video, you'll be notified about it. Please leave comments and questions in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Hey, thanks each and every one for uh, viewing today. I appreciate all of my viewers and my subscribers, and I'll see each and every one of you right here next time on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. But until then, happy editing.